All right, well, welcome everybody to our fourth episode of our Facebook Live series here on the official Facebook home of the Covenant Scots. I'm Andrew Mindeman, Director of Athletic Communications here at Covenant College, and welcome to this new series that we're debuting this fall where we will be taking a look at each of our 14 athletic programs here at Covenant. Tonight, we're being joined by members of the Covenant men's soccer team. We have head coach Scott Bosgraf. He's in his fourth year as the head coach of the Scots, his 12th overall year assisting on the coaching staff here at Covenant. 2019 USA South Coach of the Year. He's also a 1989 Covenant alum and was a four-year player for the Scots. Welcome, head coach Scott Bosgraf. Thank you. Um, we also have a couple of team captains with us. We have uh, Noah Lee, a senior defender from Augusta, Georgia. Noah was a 2019 All-USA South first team selection and an All-Region second team choice last year and is also a three-time USA South All-Academic honoree. And then we also have Parker Owen, another senior. He's a midfielder from Knoxville, Tennessee, two-time All-USA South player and was on last year's USA South All-Tournament team. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. But if this is your first time joining us on this uh, Facebook Live series, this is an interactive show. So if you have any comments or questions for this group, feel free to leave it in the comments and we'll get to those as time permits tonight. But first, uh, let's go ahead and get started with Coach Bosgraf. And Coach, uh, you're about halfway through your training season this fall. Um, how is the team progressing and what are your plans for your squad the rest of the semester? Yeah, Andrew, I think um, obviously it's been a very different year. Uh, normally at this point in the fall, we're well into our season, um, several games under our belt, um, and that looks totally different this year. So um, we came in um, with the student body instead of coming in and having a camp, and um, then had to go through a process of um, really just training in, in groups um for a couple of weeks uh and then for the the past several weeks we've been uh training as a as a whole group um and i think they've done really really well uh it's hard sometimes to stay focused when there is no game at the end of the week or game in the middle of the week but i think the guys have done a great job of staying focused on um just developing every day we take the field uh and i think a big part of that is noah and Parker's leadership, being two of the captains, uh, they've done a great job of just um, making it fun, uh, bringing joy to each training session, as well as getting the guys to work really, really hard. So uh, I, I think we're in a really good place. And uh, as we get through the next month or so, um, I think that will continue. I think we'll just continue to develop and uh, just, just have a good time, grow closer as a unit, and uh, hopefully be able to play uh, some kind of schedule in the spring. Yeah, you know, Parker, you know, you hear coach talk about, you know, at this time of the year, usually we're four, five, six, seven matches into the season. Uh, what's the team's mindset as you all are approaching this fall, just practicing and you don't have those matches to look forward to? Right, uh, kind of hinting off what coach said. Um, obviously we don't have a season in the fall, um, but kind of the thing that um, Noah and I have been stressing is um, that doesn't really give us an excuse to just um, mess around in the fall. Um, we definitely need to bring intensity to every single practice um, because, you know, even though we don't know what our what season is going to look like in the spring, if there's even going to be a season, uh, we definitely still need to be putting in hard work where we're on the field um, every time we step on the field. Um, whether it's in drills, whether we're doing sprints, um, as a unit, we do need to be putting in hard work um, because that's not only gonna benefit the individual, but it's also gonna benefit the team as a whole. Um, because even if um, we are still unsure of our season, there is still something greater to work for, so. Uh, Noah, I, I imagine that uh, the team bonding and creating that team chemistry has been a little bit different this fall. We've got all these COVID precautions that we have to follow, but you all have a very great culture within the men's soccer program. How are you guys being able to cultivate that culture with the newcomers uh, on this team this fall? 
Yeah. Um, so usually we have a captain's camp before we come into the season and not having that was a big loss this year. So we really tried to emphasize the team culture through like team meetings. And um, at the beginning of the year, the 14 day period, we had the 10 man pods. And I actually think that was a huge help because we couldn't practice with anyone else and just having those 10 guys. And of course, like there's a couple freshmen in each group, but having those pods like really helped start the team bonding process. And then after that 14 day period, when we could all come back together, I know coach gets a little mad at us sometimes, but the warm up lines are a really big part of it. Um, sometimes we goof around, but that's just where we're all together, you know, at the beginning of practice and we're not really focused as we should be, but it's a good time where we get to like talk about things and we're closer together. And then the last thing we started, um, we got some small groups um, that Coach Boz laid out. We're trying to meet every other week, but it's a really good time. There's a senior leader in each group and just a good time to catch up on things that we need to pray about, like school or family issues or other things like adjusting to college life, especially for the freshmen. So all of those things have been really helpful in creating a team bond this year where we didn't have it really before. Uh, once again, to our viewers, if you have any questions or comments for this group, feel free to drop it in the comment section and we'll get to as many of those as we can throughout the show tonight. Uh, changing gears a little bit, uh, let's rewind back to last year. Um, an incredible season, 18, two and two overall, undefeated in conference play, 13 and 0. Um, just a tremendous season. The on-field success was definitely there, but Coach, uh, when you have a season like that, um, obviously the, the wins and losses, they, they look good on paper, but what were some of the other key elements that led to the success of that team last year, last season? Yeah, I think that goes back to some of the stuff that even Noah was talking about there. Um, when they have the preseason get together, um, you know, and, and get to spend some time bringing the new guys in, but also just building on the bond from the years prior to that with the guys. I think that had a, a lot to do with our success. Um, I think the guys understand um, what we're looking to accomplish both on and off the field. And when they get to tell new guys about that, uh, give their testimony, show them what that looks like, um, again, both on and off the field. I think that just builds something really, really special going into the year. Uh, I think that group uh, that graduated last year and Noah and Parker and, and Jake and Isaac that are the seniors this year, um, they kind of worked with the guys before them to understand what was expected as far as the culture of our program. Uh, when people come into our program, um, it kind of is what you're pressured to do um, just because you're a part of the program. And I think they've done such a good job with that, that guys immediately understand that and, and buy into that. And uh, that was just a big part of what we did last year. Uh, I think, you know, one of the keys on the field and off the field was our depth as well. I mean, we just had guys that we could plug in if necessary. You're not going to go through a whole season without injuries or some significant things that happen that you have to make changes for. And we just always had the next person that would step up um, and it was just it was just a lot of fun. I mean, the guys did such a great job of even in high pressure situations, just having been there and done that a little bit before handling those things well. And that's why I think you saw the success that they had last year. Uh, Noah, I think coach was hitting on it a little bit, um, talking about the, the real keys that went into last season's last season's success. Um, I think a lot of that is the not for self mantra that you all have had uh, during Coach Bosgraf's time as head coach. Um, talk about that phrase a little bit, what it means to you and what it means to the team. Yeah, so Coach um, came up with that mantra in the summer of 2019. Um, I remember very well, like our first team meeting, uh, we brought it up and we went over Philippians 2, 3 through 4, which says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And we just spent like 30 minutes unpacking that and what 
it meant to each of us. And especially for me, I look at the last part of that, um, not looking at the interest of ourselves with, to the interests of others. And on the field, especially, that's um, seen in just like our work ethic, like how we're gonna work for each other. Um, soccer is such a team sport. And, you know, when one person's not doing the work, it can just cause a collapse with the others. So really just trying to work for our brothers. Um, that's kind of where we see it on the field, but Coach Boz has done an amazing job off the field implementing this um, with service. Um, a big thing we do is um, volunteer with Project uh, 52 with C Rob. And then a couple of weeks ago, we helped out um, a staff member um, move some like yard sheds at the thing. But I think that's just an amazing testament to like the culture of our team and our willingness to serve. And that's going to carry on um, for much longer. Parker, when newcomers come into the program, how have you guys? Uh, acquainted those newcomers with this not for self. Yes, um, kind of where we start that is obviously captain's camp, but obviously things have changed. But right. um, definitely going back to the small groups thing was definitely a big thing um, because in small groups you're really investing in other people. It's not necessary. It's not about you. You're looking to see what how people can be prayed for, how you can care for other people. Um, and so I think that was a really really. Um, great thing that we did. Um, and then kind of the, the biggest thing is just leading by example. Um, because a lot of times is you'll see in other programs, like they'll make underclassmen or freshmen, like pick up the cones or like take the water, or pick up the balls. And I just don't think any of the, any of the upperclassmen, I can speak for me, Jake, Isaac, Noah, that we don't mind doing that. Like we want to to do that because we want to lead by example and influence the underclassmen to do that when they are then upperclassmen. So I feel like that's a really, really big part of it. Um, and then um, I definitely think on the field um, while we're playing, um, it's not only being positive, but um, also encouraging um, our teammates because um, on some days, not everyone's going to have a good practice, but that doesn't mean that you can be silent and just um, feel sorry for yourself. You need to lift up your teammates because at the end of the day, if we all buy into um, our that not for not for self mentality, and then that will show on the field. And I definitely think that's what we saw last year um, because when um, we focus on that not for self attitude, um, everyone is okay with what their role is um, on the team. Um, I definitely feel like when everyone is um, content with their role on the team or not content, but like, you know, everyone has a big part to play on the team. I feel like that's really, really important. Um, so I feel like those are the few things that we try to implement to the freshmen. So. So again, we, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send them in to us. We have a couple of them that uh, we'll get to real quickly here. Um, Coach, for you, um, we had a question coming about playing any scrimmages. No, we're not playing any outside teams this year, but plans for inner squad stuff, anything on the horizon there? Yeah. So um, we're going to try to do a, a full fledged inner squad scrimmage. Uh, I believe it's the 17th Saturday of October. Um, I think it's going to be at 9 a.m. in the morning. Obviously that could change a little bit with the weather. Um, we've had a couple of inner squad scrimmages already, but nothing really official. So, I think that's going to be our first one, and, and we may have the ability to stream that and have people watch that uh, and kind of, you know, just make it feel like we're doing something normal for this time of year. Um, and I think if that goes well, there could be things to follow. Yeah, we do definitely have plans to uh, broadcast that. Um, so you uh, checking out athletics.coven.edu for any links on that. And, of course, we'll tweet them out or put them on Facebook as well. But we're in the works on that uh, to do some broadcasting for those so that uh, parents and other people can watch a little bit about what's going on within Covenant Men's Soccer this fall. Um, and then Noah and Parker, we had another question come in. Uh, you guys can take turns on this if you want, but um, what has been the most influential part of being a part of the Covenant Men's Soccer program for you all? Uh, I can go first, I guess. Um, 
I, I definitely think that um, it's just being part of a community. There's a, definitely the community inside the um, men's soccer team, but it's also a greater community that's Covenant College. And I feel like those two go hand in hand. Um, I definitely feel like being a part of this community has definitely um, strengthened my faith um, with the guys around me, um, definitely create a brotherhood with guys on the team. Um, and I definitely think now knowing um, what I know now, even if I um, came to Covenant and um, didn't play soccer, I think I'd be happy, you know, and I feel like that's the um, big thing to, a uh, big thing to emphasize. Um, and so, yeah, I'll toss it over to Noah. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. Um, just going to add on. Um, definitely the view of like how athletics can play a role in like the Christian life. Um, coming in, I didn't really get that. But over the last three years, like I look at other teams and how they bicker and fight at each other. And like ours is such an encouraging community of like brothers um, and how athletics and soccer can um, just be a tool to like share the gospel. Um, it's really cool. Like I remember last year we played Methodist and one of their better players was came up to some of us after the game, it's just like, man, like I'm jealous of what y'all have. Like, I really wish I could be a part of it. Um, so I think that's just a testament to the culture that Coach Boz has laid out and that people before me and Parker have um, put out too. And we're just trying to continue that and play for something bigger than ourselves. That's awesome. All right, well, let's segue into our last segment tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about memories a little bit. Uh, I've done this with the other teams on this Facebook Live series so far, but I'm going to put a little bit of a twist on it um, because I think Scotland Yard is a fantastic place to play a game and to take in a game. So, Coach Boz, for you, um, I, I think we have one of the biggest home field advantages in the country mm -hmm. uh, with Scotland Yard. What's it like to be in that environment and how has that helped your teams in the past? Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic to be in that environment. Uh, Scotland Yard is a unique place. Um, I think just uh, the field itself, the view that you have playing under the lights sometimes. And then, like you said, the fans, the fans are just tremendous. Um, and I think that plays a huge role for us. Um, we hear it all the time from visiting teams when they come here. They just love to come here and play just because of the environment that they're playing in. It's a lot of fun when there's, you know, a lot of noise and hundreds of people yelling and screaming and really, really supporting their team well. So it makes a huge difference for our guys. Um, you know, just walking down onto the field, uh, knowing that they're going to be there, be there cheering for you. Um, I know several times since I've been here, uh, it's played a role. I mean, when we're in a tight game, when we're in overtime, when we're in a, in a spot where we need a little help, they're always there to do that. And I think that is unique. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Uh, Noah, favorite memories uh, at Scotland Yard during your tenure here? Yeah. Um, my first one, it's got to be my one and only goal. <laughs> uh, that was that was pretty fun <laughs> but just every home game is so special and definitely homecomings when you hear the bad bagpipes coming down um that just gets you fired up no other but also want to give a shout out to the grounds crew mm -hmm. chief um, previously and now caleb that's just an awesome playing surface and been really blessed to play there the last three years. So really thankful for that. Parker. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about my, my first goal. It was uh, freshman year. We were playing Methodist at homecoming and um, it was just funny. I just got a header at the back post. I'm mean, hit back post and I put it across goal. And I, when I scored, I really didn't know what to do. So rather than running to the fans, I ran to the bench, big mistake, but um. No, it was still a fantastic, it was still an awesome moment. Um, and then just kind of harping on what Coach said, I definitely think that, and also what Noah said, uh, every single game is an absolute joy. Um, and, 
I think one of my greatest like memories is like all of last season, honestly, playing at home all of last season. Um, definitely going on a win streak definitely helps, um, you know, and then definitely having all of our fans there. Um, I guess just like a massive thank you. I don't think fans realize how big of a role they play. Um, sure. But and then definitely um, I definitely think some of the better memories just like um oh sometimes on away trips there's just funny moments on away trips um that are just really good and then um yeah that's what i can think of but definitely my first uh goal freshman year is definitely my favorite y'all allowed three goals at scotland yard last year in nine matches um i mean the the crowd has to play a part of that right like you you know that obviously you all were a good team but um, in nine matches, three goals allowed, and we were unbeaten at home. Um, in, in your times here, uh, so you've been here three years, going into your senior year now, um, was the environment any different than la- uh, last year compared to those first two years? Um, I think it's been the same. <laughs> Yeah, no, they've they've kept up their they've kept up good work. <laughs> it's been it, no, it's been. I mean, see, homecoming. I mean, homecoming attendance. It's the it was the same every single year, and I think that's the I think that's the great part about Covenant is I don't think no matter how well or not how well we're doing, people are still going to show up for the games, and I feel like that's a really big part because um, if we're in a slump um, and we see fans there, definitely encourages us to uh, perform better. So. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you all for joining us tonight. And thank you to our audience for participating and joining us as well. Uh, We'll be back next week with a look at the softball program and new head coach, Jenny Roan. Once again, we'd like to thank the Covenant men's soccer team for joining us tonight. Head coach Scott Bosgraf and seniors Noah Lee and Parker Owen. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thanks, Andrew.